Good morning and welcome to Moments of Encounter. My name is Father Mike Irwin. It is Friday, March 20th, uh, and this is our little check-in this morning to be able to reflect on our scripture, to be able to keep up our liturgy of the word. Um, By the way, if you ever want to be able to track down our readings for the day or where we are liturgically, remember to look at usccb.org. Um, it's really an easy website to use, and it's done by our National Bishops Conference, uh, so it's really reliable. So it's usccb.org, and you'll be able to find the readings, find where we are liturgically, and get some updates on the national level as well. It's one of our most reliable websites, quite honestly. Again, this is Father Mike Irwin, and giving a reflection for our four parishes, St. Catherine Drexel and the Tri-Parishes. And so let us pray. Loving God, on this Friday, as we are headed deep into Lent, living out in the desert of isolation that's necessary to be able to contain a major virus, a a flu pandemic, we ask you to, to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to be nourished by your word. Um, we do not need bread. We need every word that comes from the mouth of God. And may you bless us to understand your word today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So for today, I want to focus on our first reading, actually, from the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with your words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good, that we may render as offering the bullocks from our stalls. A cereal will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree, and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again they shall dwell in his shade, and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine, and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I'm like a verdant cypress tree, because of me you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord. In him the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have a number of different dynamics that we can easily pull from this, which I'll talk about briefly here. The first is our focus on forgiveness. Um, Our God is always willing to forgive us. And this frees us up, uh, allows us to get back on track, allows us to be able to do the ministry and hear the call and, and to take risks with our lives to do kindness. Because... We otherwise, without forgiveness, will find ourselves remembering too much of what we did wrong in the past or focus overly on what other people have done poorly to us in the past, which ties us up and stops us before we get started. And so our God wishes to forgive us so that we can be opened up to his aid. Um, Notice here how... Um, it asks us also to, to set number two to be able to move away from the works of our hands. This has been a startling part of this um, COVID-19 response is that we can't do our ordinary work. Either we have to do work differently or we're not working at all. And we can feel kind of useless. Us Americans love working. I know we would deny that. I think we would complain that we work too much, but yet we work too much. Um, We put a lot of reliance on it into our own self-esteem. It can become our God, this work of ours. And now that we're forced to either change our work or do less work or do different kind of work, um, we are um, having to reevaluate how much work 
is a part of who we are and to let go of that, to let be work be work and let God be God and our relationships to each of them should be different. So that was our number two point. But the main, main thing I want to focus on is this idea of love them freely. God wants to love us freely. He loves us very passionately. And that's what we focus on also in this late Friday of, of Lent, on the third Friday of Lent, is that God loved us so freely that recklessly Jesus Christ gives himself over to our stewardship and our sinfulness found him hanging on a cross. That's how recklessly and freely God loved us. Hopefully we internalize that during this Lenten journey, that our God is perhaps irresponsible with how much he loves us, which probably explains how much he forgives us and even releases us from putting work first. Uh, God realizes that love is the most important thing. And therefore, in order to teach us how to love, he does so with complete zeal. Hopefully we can continue to do that, not taking unnecessarily risks about being able to take care of each other, such as just running off and breathing each other's air or, or the like, but I've seen people do something wonderful, which is to check in on each other. And that's kind of a cool thing that we'll try to check in. We were talking about this in a leadership team here at the four parishes, is can we set up a pattern where each of us tries checking in on a fellow church member? And if you don't have a phone number for somebody, maybe the parish offices could help you be able to figure that one out. But if we could just check in, almost like having a support buddy, and if you need somebody to give you a call or you would love to connect with another person but you're not too sure how best to do that, give us a call at the offices and we'll help coordinate that. 920-887-2082. But that could be one of many ways that we can safely, but with risk, accept the free love God is giving us and to open up our hearts and be more transparent about how we want to care for each other. I want to finish with this beautiful little prayer uh, regarding a pandemic. It was written, I guess, in the Cincinnati area uh, by people who worked with homeless folks, um, but it's a beautiful prayer. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their children schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those that have no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market Remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. During this time, when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find, yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. May God keep you well. And again, if you need anything from your parishes, call us at 920 887 2082. God bless you. This is Father Mike Irwin from St. Catherine Drexel in the Tri-Parishes.